Hi, uh, welcome to A Word with Kelly Scott Reed. I'm so discombobulated today. I'm speaking with Stephen Gold, author, noir author, um, dirty realism author. Thank you so much for joining us today, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. It's really an honor. Where are you coming to us from? Uh, I'm currently in Japan. I'm currently in Nagoya, Japan, and it's uh, nine o'clock at night. <laughs> it's eight o'clock in the morning for us. I was saying earlier that you're coming to us from the future. So I'm very excited about speaking to the a future past man. The past and the future <laughs> meeting right now. Flashing, yes. Um, so what? why are you in Japan? Like what brought you there? Um, it's a really, really long story. Um, basically, I wanted to be a high school English teacher in England. Uh, that's my training. Um, I went for one job interview and there were 200 applicants for one high school position. And at that time, I was still doing teacher training at another school, uh, my old high school, actually. And one of the teachers suggested, you know, have you thought about teaching in China? Because they're taught in China. And my girlfriend at the time was um, born in London, but she was... Um, her family was originally from Hong Kong. So we went over to Hong Kong. Uh, I got really bad food poisoning. So decided, you know, two weeks in the hospital. It was really, really bad. It was probably for me in stuff like seahorse and starfish. <laughs> it was really stupid on my account. Um, so after that, I had a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, trauma to do with food. So even though I loved, uh, I love Hong Kong, I just decided, you know, why don't we think about moving to somewhere else? So I researched uh, Argentina, uh, Vietnam, Korea, uh, Japan, because I always planned to travel around the world. Just happened to get, get a job first um, in Japan. And then I broke up with that girlfriend a little while after I met my ex-wife and then had kids. And then that's why I'm here. That's why I'm still still in Japan. You know, my daughter's uh, uh, five minutes down the street from me. So um, that's why I'm here. Maybe too much information in that story. Sorry, guys. No, <laughs> no that's amazing. Um, we all wind up in places. I you don't, when you look back on why you wind up where you are, it's kind of amazing. For me, I, I've lived in my area my whole life. So I've lived in the Rochester area and then surrounding areas exclusively. Um, so I always, when I talk to people who have far, traveled so far from the home that they originally come from, it's always interesting to me how people end up that way. Um, we, my family, uh, my, my mom is first generation Italian, my dad, Irish first generation. So we still have relatives over in, in Europe. So um, we do still have that connection and I visit and would long to live somewhere else, but my whole life I've only lived in one spot. So I'm always very curious about what brings people uh, to so far away. Yeah, I've always had really itchy feet, I think. I've always wanted to, uh, even from a, a very young age, I knew, um, you know, I was an army brat anyway. So I always kind of knew that I wouldn't stay in one place for too long. Very interesting. So speaking of uh, staying in one place, I, was, I, 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 re I read through, went on your website, read through uh, short stories just to, to reconnect with, because we read a lot in our press different authors to just to reconnect with your work. And I absolutely love it. And I actually write more on the noir side myself. When I do write a story, even a, a review of music, it tends to be that way because I was a Nick Tosh's fan. I'm not sure if you've read a lot of Nick Tosh's. Um, he is a journalist that writes almost in the noir style. He did a book on uh, Dean Martin called Dino that is absolutely incredible, um, but uh, it's noir I'm style. Mm. Yeah. So I had this question, it came into my mind. Do you think you choose your genre or the genre chooses you? Wow, okay, that's, that's a good question actually. Um, I think the genre chooses 
the author, I think, because I never set out to be a crime writer. There was just a, the stories that I wanted to tell just happened to be, I guess, crime related. But um, mm, I think, yeah, I never intended to be a crime writer at all. I always wanted just to be kind of, I liked, I always liked Raymond Carver. Uh, Raymond Carver and Charles Bukowski, those are Billy Childish. Most of the writers, um, Richard Yates as well, Richard Brouchgun, most of the writers that I actually, that inspire me the most are not crime writers at all. Um, so I guess I kind of started more towards dirty realism, kind of grit lit, it's called nowadays. And I've kind of, the stories that I've happened to tell have been related to crimes, I guess. What yeah, do you that's think? very interesting. Well, here's, I think it chooses you only because I've never, I never was a huge fan of noir as a young person. It's not what I started out loving. I started loving, you know, horror most of the time. Um, I re read James Elroy, My Dark Places, and thought, wow, that's, great but I would start writing things and people were like wow that that's really sounds very like crime noir writing and I was like mm. okay so I started to read more and it never kind of occurred to me that I just was writing it kind of as my natural state of how I explain mm. things um I really love to I love things to punch me in the face <laughs> I love statements and I I, I it, it has it's like I love the the, the turn of phrase Oh, hey, there's yeah. your ceiling. <laughs> I don't care. I love it. There you go. Um, yeah, more the turn now. of phrase, uh, the turn of phrase, um, <clears throat> the way things are said in a surprising way. Um, I really love that. So I think it chooses you. It's just I started doing it and I love it. Um, it's not always <clears throat> um, something I read. Uh, I read uh, some true crime stuff. Um, but mostly just I enjoy reading it and I enjoy writing it when it's presented to me. So I think it chooses you. I don't think you go, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's what your talent is. But you have, I actually have to put my glasses on. I remembered them. I'm notorious for not bringing my glasses. I actually wanted to read back to you something that I read that just is an example of what I'm talking about. Hold on, let me get it up. Sorry. Oh, so it came from the story uh, in an unmarked place. We shared many summers doing nothing, spent hours drinking cheap wine in the greenery of the park until we vomited, sniffing glue until we saw red and blue flash in our eyes, smoking weed until it felt as though we had sunk into, a, into freshly cut grass, unmarked graves, Mostly we talked about nothing and said nothing, like I suppose only lovers can. We would fuck in the field behind our high school, underneath a large oak tree, with our initials carved into the bark, sun and blood-soaked nostalgia. I mean, come on. That's incredible. It's oh, incredible. Thanks. And I read it out. I, when I love something, I read it out loud. So I like, interrupted my husband. Listen to this. I'm always doing that. Listen to this. Because it's that's the kind of thing I love, like just a... A, 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 an image in technicolor um, and it's raw and, and, and lovely. I absolutely think that's beautiful. So I just wanted to make sure I read that aloud for the audience in case they wanted a piece and a taste of what you do. Oh, thank you. Um, what risks do you take as a writer and how do they pay off for you? Risks. Um... I think the only risk that you can take with writing is to be honest. Mm. Um, I think, you know, that risk is probably the most important thing that you, the most important tool that you have as a writer or as a poet. People can see through people often can see through what's not genuine. 
-hmm. So I think even if you write crime or if you write any other kind of genre, be it science fiction or whatever, I think that has to come from the heart and it has to be honest. When I first started writing seriously um, at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, I asked myself, like, am I going to be 100% honest? And if I'm not going to be 100% honest, then I'm not going to bother. For me, writing should be like, uh, should be like a relationship, right? You know, when you have, when you have a really deep relationship with someone and you can say anything and you can talk about anything and that whatever you talk about, be it something good or whether it be something bad, it always brings you closer together. I think as a writer, you should be aiming for that kind of relationship with the reader. Um, so in all of my poetry, even, you know, I've written some kind of embarrassing stuff, but maybe which would be deemed uh, embarrassing. But I thought, you know, screw it. I want to be honest and I want to build a relationship with anyone who reads me because the first thing I want them to think is, wow, that is really honest and because it's honest it's beautiful that's what I want most from my writing um and, you know yeah sure. and with, with your writing I do I think the honesty comes through um and sometimes being honest hurts or is uncomfortable um and that is a risk I've only recently started putting my writing out there for for viewing because that fear of the intimacy between the reader and the author that scares me. I'm not, I don't wear my emotions on my sleeve. I wear happiness on my sleeve. I wear joy on my sleeve, but I don't just delve into the darker places publicly. Um, and so when most of my writing is very dark, people are extraordinarily shocked <laughs> when they read it. They're like, what's wrong with you so that honesty is a risk for me and it's only recently I've had the courage to do that when did you begin the writing process when did this start for you I think it started it well I used to write when I was younger when I was about 18 19 and I got published in a few you know the indie press at the time uh, poetry and uh, some short stories and then when I moved abroad for example when I came to Japan I had to learn a whole new language from scratch. So I didn't really have any time to do writing. And then after like, I guess 13 years of it building up, it got to the point where I really needed to start writing um, where I was privately and personally at that time, I needed to write. It was very important for me to write and you know, in that time, I think I wrote 200 poems and four novels and a collection of short stories. And it really, I was going through a really bad time at the time. I was really, really depressed. And I think that really helped my writing in a way. So that's really when I started properly uh, 2019, end of 2019. November, uh, October 2019 was when I really started, okay, I'm going to write a novel and I'm going to start writing poetry i'm gonna start writing everything so if there was a novel if someone has never read you before that you would like someone to start with for you would we start at the beginning or would we go would we start with a novel that was in the middle like how would you like people to read what order would you like people to read to truly understand what it is you are about uh, i think probably um my second novel well, it was actually my first but it's been published again so my second novel uh, um red dog always the dead and that's a story about jean sprang uh jean spangler who was a hollywood actress who disappeared uh in the late 1940s and then i kind of put a lot of trauma into writing that so that's It's got it's got some elements of like a, a bad relationship that I had at the time, a few a few small elements, but I think that's 
maybe the most important thing I've I've written. Oh, good. That's because we were we were talking about that. Marianne and I were like, wow, like where should we start? <laughs> There's so many. You have such you have a rich body of work, a varied body of work. And you, you seem to love music as well because you were we follow you yeah, on, yeah. on Twitter. I'm constantly going, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. We have what, when you write, do you listen to music? Do you have silence or how do you do it? I don't know how people can write with music. I can't I can't do it. It's too distracting and I don't know how people can they can read them they can read someone's book and then write at the same time. I can't do that either. I just need to write with no other distraction, just me and the keyboard. That's it. Though I'd love to be able to write to music because I find music so inspiring. Um, but I just, maybe I'm not good at doing two things at once. So maybe that's why. I'm not good at two things at once either. That's why I'm not as good a writer as you. <laughs> no, Because no. I, I always do two things at once. It's like, a, it's compulsive. Um, but um when you start to write something, do you have a format laid out? You know, when you're writing crime or noir, there's usually a story, obviously, a beginning, middle and end kind of a, it's not like free flowing or whatever. Um, do you have a story in mind, an end in mind, or do you just let it unfold for yourself? Do you surprise yourself as you're writing? I think I just write. I just, uh, I don't plan. Um, I do make, I spend a lot of time walking around. I walk a lot, uh, I ride the train a lot. So I tend to make, I tend to make uh, the book that I wanna write, I make it into a movie in my head first. Mm -hmm. And then I spend a lot of time imagining it. And then I just write down what I've imagined, basically. That doesn't sound too weird. It doesn't, I, tend, I actually wrote a story. It was one of the first things that are, a Rough on Y'all Press published um, when I was walking in the woods with my dog. I, I do the same thing. I hike mul multiple miles a day, four or five miles a day with my dog. And I will just ruminate, ruminate. I'll talk it out loud. I'll speak it into my phone and record it. Um, I'm the same way. I have to move in order to think. Um, in general, um, I'm not a sitter. <laughs> so it's very hard for me to sit and write. Um, it's mostly the idea and then I have to force myself to actually put it on the paper. I just think that's interesting because I'm very much the same way. Do you, um, could you recall a time for us when you realized that language had power? Oh, wow, that's another good question as well. Um, um, I guess in high school, I guess reading uh, of Mice and Men in high school, I realized, you know, like um, the the climax of that novel just completely blew me away at the age of 16. And I thought for the first time, books can be as powerful as music or they can be as powerful as movies. And you can build a world inside someone's head by your words is, probably the first time I realized that people, if you've got the talent, you can have that kind of power. Yeah, that's, that was one, that was a pivotal one for me. I think for me, gosh, I read very, um, you know, commercial. When I was younger, I would like sneak into the library and do the adult section and get like Stephen King books out. Um, who's the other crime writer that wrote? Oh, I can't think it's way too early. I, I barely had coffee. <laughs> I can't remember the name, whatever. But a lot of like horror was my, sub I liked the subversive stuff. I liked to have a little bit of like um, danger in my reading, even just the process of getting the book. Do you have anything in your life that, that feels that way for you, where you feel like, ooh, this is a little dangerous if I write this, or this is a little dangerous if I read this? Has there any, been a time in your life where that happened for you? Sometimes I worry when my daughters are older that they will read my stuff. And because <laughs> I have been so honest in a lot of my poetry or 
in a lot of other things. I wonder, I do worry about them reading it. I think that's probably the only thing I've ever worried about when it comes to writing. That and, you know, worrying that it's not good enough, which pushes me on to try and do better. But mm, apart from the ordinary insecurities, I think that every writer has, I never have too much to worry about when I'm writing. If there's something, if there's a story that I want to tell, I'm going to tell it. Um, there are some things that I won't talk about or I won't write about because they're not my story or that's not my voice. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I won't even attempt it. And I've never really fought anything like that. Um, mm, mm, so apart from maybe I wouldn't attempt to write in someone else's voice or someone else's um, someone else's history perhaps but I feel if you want to write something everything's you know anything's possible if you know you you're if you're dedicated to it so I remember that writer's name just so you know because I don't want to feel like I've lost my mind Dean Koontz <laughs> he wrote okay oh you got <laughs> Dean Koontz the poor guy <laughs> But when I was a kid, I was like, ooh, let's get this book out. This is amazing. It's terrifying, you know, that kind of thing. Sorry about that, but I want to make sure I did. I have to do that for my own, like, self-worth. I have to, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> so I know yeah, stuff like uh, anything anymore. Otherwise it would have bothered you all day, I'm the same. <laughs> like, I have to say this. So what do you have coming out that we can look forward to? Okay, so uh, in November, I've got the anthology with Red Dog coming out, which is 30 fantastic stories, all with the theme of gone um, or to be gone. I just had a, a poetry collection released from uh, Outcast Press and hopefully uh, a new novel coming out soon, but I don't know when I'm still working over the, the first draft or working on the second draft now. When do you write? Like, what is your, do you have a process or do you have set times or do you just kind of fit it in? Um, poetry, I tend to write um, outside, um, in the pub or in the bar. Um, though I haven't written any for a while. I haven't, I quit drinking, but, so I haven't really written much poetry recently, but novels I write anywhere and, anywhere basically that I can um, I write on my phone and then I transfer it to my iPad later um, and then continue writing that way I you know I don't I work a lot and I don't the free time that I do have I want to dedicate to you know my girlfriend and my daughters so I try and squeeze writing in as much as possible when possible so you know uh, I think writing on your your phone helps because you know sometimes I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the subway for a little while and I'll, I'll do twenty minute writing here, take a later train, and then when I'm coming home, I hang out at the subway station again and there's some benches and I get some writing done. So I try to write as much as possible when possible. So you're fitting it in the margins, like you're getting. That, that's kind of a cool way to do it. I, I, um, I'm pretty similar in that regard where if, it, if, the, if the mood hits me, I'll go for it. Um, yeah, yeah. And you, you're an editor of a, 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 of, a, of a literary mag, so you're reading a lot. And that's also incredible. That's a lot, a very time consuming. And how do you find that? Do you enjoy being the editor of a mag? Do you, what does that bring for you? Um. I love it, but it can be very stressful. I think um, I think writers can be quite difficult to work with sometimes, myself included, because everything that you write is your baby. 
Um, and then when you give your work to an editor, you're basically saying, here's my child, you know, look after it. And then if something's wrong with it later, you know, people get, oh, it doesn't look as good as I thought, or it didn't get as much likes as I wanted it to. You know, I've heard all, kind, all kinds of things. Um, but mostly, most, what I love most about it is showcasing people with talent. Um, one of the best things that I've done or I found most rewarding was I did the first cut poetry series uh, um, close to the bone. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you know uh, HLR. Um, mm-hmm. She's like a fantastic poet, but she sent me her work. Um, and she was one of the first chapbooks I read, one of the first submissions. And um she wrote a history of um, the history of present uh, complaint. And, um, oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm writing this down so I can look it up. Yeah, but she's an amazing writer. She's hugely talented. And mm-hmm. uh, Gabriel Ha, I published him as well. And um, there's been so many hugely talented poets that I got the opportunity to publish that really meant a lot to me. And still does, even though I left it like, I think a year and a half ago, I left this series a year and a half ago. But just getting to showcase people's talent is the most rewarding thing. How about you guys? I, okay, so it's a kind of the strangest thing because for, for me, it was so far out of my wheelhouse doing any of this. And it was Tiffany who brought the idea in. And I'm kind of... Um, I ha- once an idea hits me, that's good. It has to happen. I'm that kind of person. I'm like, oh no, we have to do this. This has to happen. So she brought us this beautiful idea, an altruistic idea, because we truly love, I truly love other people. We all do. But in particular writers, the art, the craft, um, how interesting um, the insights are. I love to do it. Um, there's been a few times where I've been over the moon with something that I've read that I've fallen in love with. I get little crushes on the writing, like a poem. Like I kind of fall in love with it. I fall in love with uh, the sentiment, the wording, um, just these little things. So I get these little crushes day after day where I get to, to read things and we we're pretty, we edit, but it's not, we don't change anything of the writer's voice. And I really think we, we stick to that, um, all of us. We want to hear that. We love what they wrote. Little things like a punctuation mark or a misspelling, which is rare. Um, uh, something that can be said differently. Um, we might, you know, that we might say something on, you know, we, we correct punctuation and stuff like that, but we love the writer's voice. And I think we all agree um, because we're all writers ourselves, that we are difficult. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to publish. I didn't want people telling me my kids were ugly. So I decided I don't want anybody. I'll just, I'll do this for myself. But this has been an incredible experience. I absolutely love it. And they, uh, Tiffany's great because she's like, if you want to do something like these interviews, because I'm more of a social person, I'm extremely extroverted. So when I read something that I love, I need to meet the person who wrote it. Like I said, I get crushes on the writing. So I need to, I mean, not in a, gross way <laughs> but I need, to meet the, about that. <laughs> I need to meet the people behind the words for me it's very important so she lets me do a word she's like Kelly go for it and I've been it's the highlight of my life everything else is kind of a support system for this in my opinion I absolutely love it and I hope that I can continue to do it forever and ever and ever so we'll see but I'm talking too much. I'm supposed to be talking to you. <laughs> no, no, but it sounds like you really love it, which is really good to have that deep love for what you're doing. Yeah. How do you pronounce the magazine? Because I had kind of like a, a long discussion with uh, Barbara, um, Barbara Jones, about this the other day. She's she can pronounce it beautifully, whereas I'm uh, sure <laughs> I, my pronunciation is awful. Mine is too. It's Rafanya. I guess that's what it's. Wow. Okay. Your pronunciation is good as well. Um, but it's because Tiffany has reminded me. We call it as a joke, raw funyuns. 
because Funyuns is a brand of, of potato chip kind of thing, but it's made of on, onion rings. It's called a Funyun. So we call it raw Funyuns as a joke, but <laughs> it's raw Funyun. <laughs> okay. I was I was calling it Roy Funyun. So there you go. There's my <laughs> terrible pronunciation. Uh, well, it's been so great talking to you. I really, I'm so appreciative that you said yes to this. This has no, been thank you. a highlight for me. Thank you. No, and thank this will you. be out in a couple Wednesdays. We'll be letting you know when it's going to be, and we'll tag you in it, and you get to watch our conversation, and hopefully others will too and learn a lot from you. Okay. Thank you so much, Kitty. Thank you.